dear friends covid-19 is largely known as a respiratory disease uh, marked by fever cough cold and breathlessness while scientists are still studying its impact on human body there are reports that it has some some links to neuro neurological systems as well with me today in the dialogue is dr siddharth varya he is a neurologist who works with bokhard hospital mumbai dr siddharth welcome to the show hi kanchan thanks for having me so is that true that the virus has some neurological symptoms like altered uh, consciousness so uh because this is a new virus we are still finding out a lot about the infection uh so when it first started uh, spreading uh, the main focus was on the chest complaints the respiratory complaints mm -hmm. but now after uh, all this time now we are seeing more and more cases of uh, patients who have uh, neurological complaints also mm -hmm. so uh, definitely uh, we have to say that there is a neurological component to this infection what kind of complaints are there can you please elaborate on this so uh, there are uh, any viral infection basically can cause some uh, problems in the brain and uh, covid-19 like any other virus infection is no different mm -hmm. so you can have uh, in the worst case scenarios you can have a direct infection of the brain mm -hmm. which is called as encephalitis so that can come with uh, either it starts with headache and vomiting and it can go all the way to uh, loss of consciousness and coma Mm -hmm. and uh less severe forms uh would mean that because the virus is spread over the body mm -hmm. uh it is something uh like a, a multi organ dysfunction so because all the organs are involved along with that your brain is also involved mm -hmm. so it may not be that the virus is directly affecting the brain mm -hmm. but because the entire body is involved the brain also gets affected is this true only for novel corona virus or all the viruses related to corona family so all all corona related viruses do have a similar effect we are still to know whether this covid-19 strain of corona virus acts any differently or has any specific neurological problems but uh, in general uh, all the viruses of this family will have a similar kind of effect on the brain mm -hmm. so we often hear advisories about diabetes cardiac patients and all so does that mean that the people who are suffering with uh, neurological conditions like parkinsons alzheimers or maybe fits or other other diseases you you may add uh, they are also vulnerable to uh, this virus are, are are in high risk category yes uh, so there are a couple of ways to look at this one is that this virus mainly causes respiratory problems as we know mm -hmm. so imagine that if somebody already has a disease because of which they have trouble breathing mm -hmm. now in those patients if they have corona virus mm -hmm. then they will have more chances of respiratory problems mm -hmm. because they are starting out with some disease which is causing difficulty in breathing mm -hmm. so for example uh, if there is a patient of a uh, motor neuron disease uh, mm -hmm. so those patients will already have some trouble breathing mm -hmm. uh, sometimes parkinson patients can have some trouble breathing mm -hmm. so in these patients if you get a super added infection mm -hmm. uh, it it need not be corona but any other respiratory infection they will be at an increased risk and because mm -hmm. corona is so easily uh, spreading then it is definitely something to uh, remember to keep in mind mm -hmm. uh, so all these i mean neurological conditions are mostly uh, chronic disease right uh, since we right. are closed uh, so how are you dealing with the patients who, who have chronological neurological conditions right so this is one of the uh, biggest challenges that uh, the medical community is facing because uh, on the one hand we have to be very careful uh, that we don't put uh, ourselves our family and patients at risk Mm -hmm. uh by uh you know being a part of that transmission chain so we have to take every precaution possible mm -hmm. but at the same time we have patients who need regular checkups who need uh continuous care so we have to find a balance between these two things uh what we are finding is that uh, 
with with telemedicine and video consultation and uh, some sensible arrangement of opd timings we are able to minimize that risk mm -hmm. uh, of you know infecting or spreading infection mm -hmm. so we are using video consultation more and more uh, both for follow up patients who sometimes just need to tell us what is the problem and we can give them help and even in new cases a lot of times a screening video consultation will help mm -hmm. because uh, some people will require urgent uh, consult in physical consultation and some people can have a delayed consultation mm -hmm. so even a video consultation for screening is a great tool in these times when uh, in person contact is so risky mm -hmm. so these are things that uh, the medical community is still coming to terms with and we are still adjusting but hopefully as a group we will be able to figure out what is best for the patients uh, so you are not a surgeon but there might be some uh, patients who require some kind of surgery uh, in the yes. brain or you know skull so how yes. do you deal or these kind of challenges at this absolutely this is a this is a definite challenge uh, because uh, if say a, a somebody requires an urgent neurosurgery then uh, it is uh, something that if it is delayed can have uh, very serious uh, consequences so it is very important that such patients do get the care they need uh, the issue is that because of the spreading and because there are some hospitals who have uh, been detected to have some staff members positive so they have had to go into quarantine so the overall uh, the resources that are available for patients are now at a stretch mm -hmm. so this is definitely a challenge that uh, we are all facing even in surgery and also in some uh, related fields like nephrology for example where kidney patients require dialysis mm -hmm. and uh, they need it regularly and uh, cancer patients who need chemotherapy now these are uh, recurring emergencies that will keep happening so it is the it is it is a need of the hour for the medical community to have a conversation with the authorities and try and figure out a way to make sure that these patients don't suffer and also are the are your patients getting the medicines which you are uh, you know prescribing to them over phone or maybe over uh, video conferencing and all right uh, so most of the patients are getting uh, the medicines required uh, the uh, health ministry has uh, released a recent document on uh, the guidelines for telemedicine and uh, what uh, is prescribed now is that there are certain medicines uh, such as uh, sedatives or antipsychotics so certain medicines that uh, is it should not be prescribed over over the phone but if there are medicines that patients have already been taking then it is allowed that we can prescribe so we they have categorized it into a b and x mm -hmm. uh, in general most most of our patients are getting the uh, prescriptions that we are giving uh, provided that we also give appropriate references and we give our registration numbers they are getting it okay. thank you dr siddharth for talking with us thank you thank you kanchan bye